And as I continue my journey down the thermometer, moving from the world inside us to the world around us, I'm headed to the last place you'd think anyone would want to make colder. Fairbanks, Alaska. I trek there to find out why. Life here seems to revolve around snow and ice. Whether it's just playing or beautiful works of fine art. It's very handsome. And while snow blankets the ground from early fall to late spring, much of the earth underneath stays frozen year round. It's called permafrost, but there's a big problem. It's not so perma. When you put a heated building on it, or even an asphalt road, permafrost melts. It wasn't always wavy like this? Oh no, when this road was first constructed, it was perfectly level. Houses are sinking into the ground. You can see that many of them are, are not particularly level. And this doesn't just happen overnight. No, of course not. It started, what, probably 40 years ago, maybe 30-some. No, no one ever thought it would get like that. You must have noticed that things were tipping a little bit. Your coffee cup would slide across the table. Well, it wasn't that extreme, because anyone's common sense would level the table, no matter what condition you're in. Good point. But what exactly is permafrost, anyway? Watch your head. Dan White of the University of Alaska, Fairbanks. Whoa! Took me underground to find out. Welcome to my lair, Mr. Pond. This tunnel is the Army and University of Alaska's permafrost joint research facility. Everything here is permafrost. When it comes to building houses and roads, there are two different kinds of permafrost. Gravelly materials. The kind you can build on. If you had a building, a road on top of this, and you thought that out, it would remain stable. The other kind of permafrost is the problem. Fine grain soil. Which gets its structural integrity from frozen water that acts as cement. So long as it's in the frozen state, you can see that it's structurally sound. You can build roads or bridges or houses on something like this. Mm -hmm. The problem, though, is that once it warms up, it turns into this. A scientific principle we call melting. Melting, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's only going to get worse as global temperatures rise. So how to stop it? We use these thermosiphon devices. Thermosiphons. Ed Yarmack is chief engineer with the company that invented these things. Well, it's pretty simple. It's just a tube. Here's how it works. First, you put some liquid in. Next, you suck out all the air to create a vacuum. Then, you get something cold. I got a little Fairbank snow. Remember how things always move from hot to cold? Well, because the snow is colder than the air in the room, Whoa! It's going nuts! Whoa. The cold draws the heat from the room into the tube, and... It's cool to the touch! It can't be boiling! Why is it doing that? Your boiling point is dependent not only on temperature, but on the pressure inside your tube or in your system. Because it's in a vacuum, it can boil at room temperature, moving the heat from the room into the snow. OK, got it. But how in the world is this going to save the permafrost? Well, when you place one of these in permafrost, the heat from the permafrost moves into the thermosiphon. One doesn't think of permafrost as having heat. Everything has heat, David. In the wintertime, the uh, permafrost is warmer than the air above it. And we all know that heat goes from warm to cold. OK, so the heat from the permafrost moves into the thermosiphon. The liquid inside boils, turning into a gas which rises up, carrying the heat with it. When it gets to the surface, the heat moves out into the colder air. So it stops thawing. Exactly. And that works? It's true. In Fairbanks, you can see them around buildings, in roads. And along the 800 miles of the Alaskan pipeline, you'll find 124,000 of them. OK, so right now, the building's heat would be thawing the permafrost, except that these devices are sucking the heat out, right? Exactly. Blasting into the colder air. But I found a problem with your system. In the summer, the air out here is not cold, so it would not be sucking heat out. I've got you. Well, in the wintertime, we super cool it, so to speak. So that it'll have excess cold for the summer? Exactly. All summer. OK, well, what evidence do I have that it's actually working? You can use this thermal imaging camera. Oh, wow. They're glowing. You remember the thermal camera. 
It sees cold areas as darker and warmer areas as lighter. So we can see that there is heat coming out of them, our pipes. But there's only one way to know for sure. Well, David, there's other ways to do that. Uh, uh, uh. I'm just kidding. 